first shot for someone once and got misunderstood uh, cloves versus heads of garlic. <laughs> they're very different. Not I, so I, I feel like I'm condescending. They're they're actually very different. Describe it to me because I'm <laughs> it's, I'm still confused. Um, cloves tastes like one thing and heads of garlic <laughs> tastes like another thing. Where you chomp down like an apple. Yeah, yeah. Cloves you cloves like you swallow like a pill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cloves you take twice a day with water <laughs> and a little meal. And garlic <laughs> is the little meal. And garlic is the little meal. Garlic is, a snack. garlic is the perfect little meal. Garlic is it's a little keto. Snack. Yeah, it's technically <laughs> keto. Um, and then there's uh, something called onions. And those you eat. Babe, you're acting like I've never seen Shrek today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to say holes. Do you remember in holes when they uh, eat the onions like course. an apple? Of course. Well, they were oh, yeah. sweet onions. Yeah, they looked yes. so they? good, though. They those looked onions amazing. in that movie, no, they looked good. Those onions good. looked delicious, and that yeah. movie solved racism, if I can remember. <laughs> 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 Did that movie come out before or after 2020? I don't know. <laughs> Are you talking about like, the BLM movement? <laughs> I mean, this isn't on yet, right? This is oh, <laughs> oh, we've been recording. Um... Actually? Yeah. Wait, when did it start recording? Oh, we're really sneaky. When did you guys start? We do a cold open. When, you ever heard of this? Was, what, what part was the cold open? When I was we talking started... smack about people we know? No. Yeah. We, started... we also weren't saying that bad stuff. We were just talking about people. I actually, if anything, what's the opposite of talking smack? I was talking... Talking love. I was giving, yes, I was giving someone a hug and a high five behind their back. Don't yes. worry, we did skip the part where you said the Holocaust didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, then let me say it now. It's <laughs> 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 awful. No, I, I was, I, I know what happened. I was there. You were there. <laughs> Oh my god, that's terrible. Nah, you were taking a selfie. I yeah. was fine. <laughs> you were right, yeah, you were survived. You look great for your age. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're 83. See, now I'm shutting down because I know that you're recording and I'm like, I can't say yeah. all the hot takes that I had before. What's no, your, I want you to say the hot takes. What's oh. your secret to your youth? Jewish fetuses? <laughs> Stomping on them. What do you want me to say? To <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you want? I don't want to... Like uh, everything you say, I'm gonna make a lateral move for how horrible it is. <laughs> I don't want to level down or find like a clever way to get out of it. But starting off setting me up saying I, that I said the Holocaust didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call out our host. How thing many like, listeners do you guys insane get? Insane that you said that. <laughs> it was really. No, it's fine that I said it. It's insane that I believe it. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. I don't. Listen, I grew up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> for the listeners who are who are not watching the video. You wouldn't believe what Meredith just did. Get on this video, because we have a visage for you in this episode. That's nice. Yes. Yeah, you're a visage. I was going to say- Is visage neutral? Could it just mean, does it necessarily imply that it's some, you're seeing something beautiful? Or could it just be like you're seeing something that evokes strong feelings? Ooh, what is a visage, like, is, Lucas? You're the one who went to good college. <laughs> Come on. Lucas, you went to some college. <laughs> I, I, hey, I went to a place. I got a piece of paper. He always checks off the some college box because he yeah. loves the college he went to so much. Yeah, He yeah. thinks it means it's a really good college. He's like, boy, did I go to some college. <laughs> <laughs> some college. That's people who it's are, like Charlotte's Web. Some pig. Some pig. Some I graduated from, from Harvard, some? and boy, did I go to some college. <laughs> 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 That's why I checked that one off. No, Visage, it's, uh, it's, it's the 13th star sign. No, that's not true. Why do, why do you say it's not true? Why would I lie to you, Meredith? Believe men. Because you're a trickster. Believe men, you're right. It's July 1st. Pride is over. Believe Pride men. is over. Finally. <laughs> Pride is over. Finally, Meredith Dietz's words. We have an amazing guest for you on today's episode of Two Nosy Mere Cats. Oh, jinx. Well, you owe me a soda. Um, Remember did that? You, yeah. I re did no. you ever have that? Of course. Jinx, you owe me a soda? Oh, my God. Why do you think my teeth are all rotten? It's because I'm so <laughs> quick on the draw. <laughs> I was checking. I don't even like soda. Your but teeth I look great. Thanks, I know. <laughs> well, they're dentures. They're fake. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I always, I, I always kind of miss when you would do stand-up and you would be like known as like the no-teeth girl. <laughs> yeah, uh, during stand-up, and that's also how I got booked. <laughs> the no-teeth girl. <laughs> Everyone needs a gimmick. Everyone needs, yeah. Gallagher had watermelons. <laughs> <laughs> when you got established enough, that's when you could get the, put the teeth yes. back. Exactly, put them back in. and then. But no, I much prefer my like gummy... I'm trying to think of a teeth like if I had a thing like that, uh, you are set. You know, for stand up, like if you could have one gimmick, mm. this is my. I'm starting. Or can we start dark? 
sometimes I think to myself. Before it, before okay. we start, I want to give you a proper introduction. Oh, thank you. Something that you actually deserve because you're a wonderful so you're a wonderful comedian who we're very glad to have on. We have a, a contributor to The Onion, yes, yes, and to Reductress, yes. Co-host of Jerry Seinfeld presents the one and only Meredith Dietz. Famous Twitter user. Very famous. Famous Twitter user makes it sound like I just like follow a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> famous Twitter lurker. <laughs> Twitter lurker, exactly. Yes. Famously up in Chris Evans' mentions, like, that's Chris a really Evans? good point. <laughs> no, dude, I'm a God's girl. It's Chris Pratt for me. Oh, <laughs> baby. Oh. I, love, I love God. Good. <laughs> oh, and you hate gay people. All right, dark intro. That's why I said happy July 1st. Yes. Yeah. So oh. you're going to say your dark thought. What's your yes, dark thought? Please. What was, oh, what's I going think on? sometimes about like, like having a stand-up like gimmick and how you would kind of be set if you did have one thing that uh drew people to you and i have had the thought i'm like fuck if i got cancer i would get a special <laughs> 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 we are starting dark all right and the your listeners are at zero and the pot is over <laughs> starting Great having you on. Um, <laughs> thank you uh, I don't want that. Yeah. That's a really bad jinx. I just think that if I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I don't want you to have that either. Thank you. You don't want me to have a special? This yeah, I don't want women. you to have a special. Hey, uh, it's it's my it's my way or the highway. I don't want anyone else to succeed. <laughs> and I, I don't want you to have a cancer because um, that star sign is kind of manipulative. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. I wouldn't. Want I don't. I I will say when it comes to astrology stuff, I don't know if I can hang. I don't know enough. I think I know all the basic things about each one, but like. Not enough when someone actually really gets going and wants to talk. I don't mm. know any of my rising signs and stuff like that. I'm not saying I'm a guy's girl, but I, yeah, <laughs> that is what, I think that is what you said. You're a fan of Chris Pratt. But everything about you is. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hang with the boys. We're I, all guys, girls under the patriarchy. Hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> Lucas is a yeah. total guys girl. Oh, you yeah. You kind of are. You kind yeah. of are. I see that for you. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't mean this to emasculate you at all. Oh, but I do. <laughs> I don't know that I think of you as like my male friend. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of me as? Perfect pitch to ask that follow-up question. Is I, just, <laughs> I just, eventually I'm like, oh yeah, Lucas is one of my guy friends. But at first I'm just like, Lucas is one of my friends. Oh, that's good. It's like you're gender neutral in my mind, but I know that you're- Damn, you're progressive. Uh, th you that's see been a friend first before. before you see their gender. That's that's, that's so nice that's of you and wonderful. That's so sweet. Yeah. Because when I think of you, I think, no, this is my friend with tits. This <laughs> exactly. is <laughs> She sees you in like his pronouns, buddy pal. <laughs> buddy pal guy. Big guy. Yeah. yeah, my pronouns are titty tatty totty. <laughs> Lucas pronouns are trusted confidant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think of you as my male friend. I'm like, that's my trusted ally. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> I've, I, I'm not mad about, but that's so interesting because I've never heard that before. Well, I just don't yeah. have that many like you, straight I guy friends. I think that's interesting. You've never heard that before because no. maybe you'll agree with me. Growing up, I think a few times a backwards compliment would be like, "I don't think of you as a girl," yeah. and you would get that friend. Why of, do you like, think I would uh, agree with you? On that? Because I think that you are the epitome of a guy's girl. <laughs> 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 I think you're clutching a PBR behind your back right now, and you're about to. Shotgun. I have both hands in front of me. <laughs> I didn't say how you were clutching it, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I always hide one in the vagina on my back. Is that what you call your ass? <laughs> Oh god. That's why I'm a guy's girl. Because I have two vaginas and an ass. And no butt. That's not what I call yeah, no butt. No, no butt. No butt. Because girls don't poop. No. <laughs> so, girl, yeah, exactly. But you, they do pee twice. <laughs> but they do pee twice. <laughs> go from here meredith how many vaginas do you have <laughs> wait 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 if oh um how many vaginas would you like to have? <laughs> okay, that's way better that's a much better question yeah i do think that post this uh life-changing uti i had i would mm. say zero would be my yeah, ideal number yeah. i'm done well i guess vagina urethra different things all your gyno listeners are going to call me out but I do that whole area. If I could be a uh, Barbie slash Ken doll, that, that would be whole ideal. Situation. That whole situation. I don't know. I've never seen it. <laughs> and I don't care to. <laughs> do you have takes on the Barbie movie that's coming out? Oh, um, not 
enough to like talk to someone who really cares about it but okay. i've been seeing a lot about it and i think i'm gonna have a good time i am very wary of how much has come out like all the pictures where we know nothing about mm. the plot and i'm really worried that expectations are gonna be too high and people who don't uh I, I think people are going to be disappointed no matter what, maybe. I think, mm. like, now the bar is real high for it to be a good movie. I well, Here's what I want to know is, do you have an idea of what the plot is going to be? I because have, a, I have I, a guess. I famous Because I famously tweeted, I was like, we don't know what the plot is going to be. What if Barbie's a prosecutor at the Nuremberg Trials? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> On which side? Yeah, a prosecutor. Okay, on, good. Which side? <laughs> on which side? A prosecutor. There are the wonderful people on both sides. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do you two freaking love talking about the Holocaust? You're obsessed. Well, I was going to say to you at the beginning of this episode is that I learned about the Holocaust very, very young. How okay. young? I was like nine years old when I saw like video footage and stuff. Because when oh. you're a Jewish kid, they just want to tell you about the Holocaust they like do. over and over again. They do do that. And um, I feel like I was talking to David Dobbins about how like sometimes like you watch comedy and no matter what, there's just subjects that like tickle your fancy. Mm -hmm. And for me, Holocaust jokes always make me laugh because I was too young to process it when I learned mm. about it. So I feel like on some level, I still can't process it. So that's why I love Holocaust jokes. Do you have a good one? Off the top of your noggin? Well, I, I have one I used to tell and I don't tell so much now. It's not so much a joke as a true story of when I went on Birthright, which is a terrible trip that is immoral in some ways, but I did it. And uh, I watched a girl break up with her boyfriend on FaceTime while she was at the Holocaust Museum in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Wait, what do you think she something in the museum inspired the breakup? You think her ancestors <laughs> died for that specifically? <laughs> exactly. They were cheering around. I would think like that would be the idea that the like that gave you the perspective to be like, wait, I'm dating a dud and it can't wait. Like we have to break <laughs> yeah. up yeah, right know, now. Yeah. Life's so short. There could be another one of these tomorrow. I'm breaking up. We're whatever. breaking up. This is ending. Versus being like Oh, I don't know. I'm just wondering what would have happened. Or like, you know, they're just like pictures of survivors and that she's like, they're so hot. I have to end <laughs> things. Like, like, I <laughs> well, my joke is that I always say, how could Giving she... Giving it all up for Esther. She <laughs> this exactly. sepia photo. <laughs> yeah, she realized she's gay for Esther. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gone too soon to date me. I always say that like she looked around at the atrocities of the Holocaust and then thought about her boyfriend and said, no, I have a different never again. Oh, <laughs> God damn. Which, different never again is never again oh i'm thinking never forget yeah you are you're thinking so, of different so, tragedy so you're saying you would break up with someone at the 9-11 museum so what of you're course. saying is you confuse the holocaust for 9-11 a lot oh well because despite their tagline i keep forgetting <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know what about, I have what about a, the alamo the alamo which one is that if they had <laughs> Which? Stand up a la mode. I love Nick Hopping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is the show. Yeah. I um, do have a bit right now about the 9-11 memorial that I've been doing, and it's been hitting differently for different crowds, but it's been working for New Yorkers a lot. Oh, it's interesting. So the, the long and short of it is, like, if I want to pick up, like, a, like pick up dads, mm -hmm. like I'm cruising for DILFs, mm -hmm. you kind of are, you know what I'm saying, the words I'm using. Oh, I yeah. want to put myself where dads are going to be. You know, and it's opposed to going to like a uh, Home Depot or a baseball game or somewhere. Uh, I'm going to put myself where dads are going to be. And that is always the 9-11 Memorial. <laughs> That's that... where P. Davidson's dad is. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, no. oh, my God. I oh, my God. I didn't see anything. I didn't. And I guess what? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> what, this... Neither did his dad. Um... Oh, my God. This fits. Yeah. I'm oh, not a... I've never been a dark humor comic. I don't, yeah. this is not me. This is not who I am. No, you talk about Look at what things. we pushed you to. Yeah, yeah what the hell? How did this happen so quick? What's look in this what... water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to remember any of this. You guys want a white know. claws? I have white claws. That would be, uh, <laughs> I would love a white claw. Of course actually. I would have a white claw in this white claw. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's someone else's joke. That's fully someone else's joke I'm stealing right now. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone else, whose joke is that? I mean, it's someone in the Brooklyn scene and they say like, their phrasing is, white it's funny it's called a white claw because that's normally where you find them 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Tim Meyer. That. Tim Meyer. I haven't seen Tim him do Meyer. it in like a year. Credit to you. Yeah, yeah. Credit to Tim Meyer. I love Tim your Meyer. joke. Yeah. I feel called out. Yeah. That yeah. Is, but do you actually want a White Claws? I, I have of three course, in I my could, Of course yeah. I want a White I feel like it's the kind of episode where... Wait, are we girls girls now? <laughs> oh, yeah. We're two, we're two girls girls. But that means we have to wait for Lucas to come back. We can finally let our guard down. Before oh, thank we... God. Yeah. I'm a girls girl. Girls girls. Yeah, we should. We... <sighs> oh, so wait. What percentage straight do you think Lucas is? Oh, I mean, no, I, back. Wait, wait. I so I have uh, blackberry, cranberry, and lime. Why are they blue? That's They're Bud surge. Light. <laughs> That's wait a, a surge. Does that have caffeine in it? No. Darn. Sorry. It's not a four loco. <laughs> yeah, but it, what if it was? What a if four, it was? A four loco was. I think. Do you guys have strong opinions? I don't have it. You pick. You're no, right. I have zero I would, opinions on anything. I'm a guy's girl. Me, personally, it looks like a Bud Light. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Bud Light was no, no, not Bud Light. What am I talking okay. about? Um, blackberry and cranberry. Oh, Ooh, blackberry. Oh, I'm gonna you. do cranberry. Really? Well, would you, do you like cranberry? I love cranberry. Well, okay, so we all are happy, right? <laughs> some of us. <laughs> oh wait, give me the cranberry. Hey, some <laughs> of us have clear urinary tracts, you know. <laughs> oh, brag, brag. Some of us brag, are elite. Brag, brag. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. To clear urinary tracts. Oh God, that's cheers, cheers to that indeed. Mm. I'm gonna gulp really loud on mic. Gulp, uh, gulp, gulp, gulp. I love it. No, the nice. first thing I ever drank was Four Loco. Interesting. And for anyone, any of the listeners that don't know, I don't think I had the one. No, I think I had one of the ones that had real caffeine in it. I think I had yeah. a real deal. Oh, original recipe. Yeah. Original recipe for Loco. And I was uh, 14, I guess. And I um, thought that that was what alcohol did to you. <laughs> I forever was like the Four Loco. Oop. Wait, Lucas is trying to get this microphone in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to let him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you. <laughs> Before we started talking, Lucas was kept being like, what do you want to talk about on the pod? What that mouth Deeper. do? Uh. <laughs> I love that what that mouth do is making a comeback. I do it's too. It's a great phrase. It's a, I like it. It's a great phrase. I what if you? I would like to use it wrong instead of being like, wait, what are you talking about? Or I didn't hear you. I was like, what did you say? What did what that mouth do? Mm. <laughs> like that's you asking someone to clarify. I want to be like, I want to know what your mouth does. You know, I do want to know what your mouth does. What's your first instinct? What's your first response? I say, Gabby, what that mouth do? Speak. Incite atrocities. <laughs> Incite atrocities. <laughs> Hold truth to power. Get canceled. But something I'd like your mouth to do is say what percentage straight you think you thought I was, because you were about to say so. No, uh, Gabby had an answer. Oh, Gabby. you had an answer. Oh, okay. I have the answer. What is it? Well, I know the answer. I know you know the answer, but what do you think is the answer? Like if I didn't know you, yeah, I would have guessed the same answer as the one that is true. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Which is, what do you I think? Have, I really don't know anything about your dating history. I guess I want to do something that doesn't, because I feel like if I say what I think, which is closer to more straight than not, then that could be um, annoying, because you're like, I'm not, I don't come across as a straight guy. Guess both that's of now our dating thing. histories right now. Yes. Make up every single ex that we've I, ever had. I <laughs> heard about yours when we were cavorting around Iceland. We and I know. <laughs> And I know Iceland. all about oh, your long... Such a good word. Your long, thank you. It actually, yeah. I... You uh, went we'll, to some we'll college. play it back. There was a... I did. I went to some college. And I... um, I, I There was a hesitation because I was like, can I... Do, do I know how to pronounce cavorting? And um, I thank you guys for drawing attention to it because I it was a very, very conscious decision. Oh, we don't know the word, so we just assume it's you were right. Uh, it's so wait, what am I... What did, what did I say? You, uh, you're Cavorting? telling, you're about Cavorting, to say. I meant to say whoring, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <good. laughs> when you were whoring around. Guilty. Finally, you got, you got Gabby's dating history. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. a lot of whoring. Actually, yes. not a lot of whoring, surprisingly. Mm. No, I, you had a slow burn friends to lovers over Facebook Messenger for three years. And sure then you went did. to Niagara Falls to go fall in love. Yeah, I yeah. remember what? your love story. I don't know you couldn't this. pretend to be a whore if you tried, you sappy motherfucker. I'm so <laughs> oh. sappy. <laughs> Cute. You didn't know her love story? I didn't know this. It's so, I was Well, you know where my crying. stuffed animals come from, right? Not we, all of them. <laughs> there's a lot. There's, there's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> we, um, we, we, we took pictures with them in Europe. We would bring them around Europe. Wait, you and your current girlfriend? Or, Me and my or, current girlfriend. Okay, Could you okay. imagine if this was something I did with every ex I ever had? <laughs> Just like the same stuffed animals? Hey, like, I've heard weirder things. Yeah, I've heard, true. Have yeah. you? Oh, I've, I've, I've heard some stuff. What is I've the heard... weirdest thing? What is the kookiest, craziest thing you've ever heard in your whole freaking life? Lucas? Honestly, Ted Bundy's dating history. So that's a shift, but... Oh, I've, that guy but... was weirdo. Can we call what he did dating? <laughs> <laughs> it feels wrong. <laughs> yeah, he 
dated around. <laughs> yeah, apparently, he yeah. Well, around. I, well, I'll tell you, I remember Chris Stefano on a podcast talking about how his aunt went on a date with Ted Bundy, said that she had a really weird vibe about him, asked for her brother to pick her up, and then like a year or so later, he was in prison. And she was like, I went out with it. So, like, that's what I was thinking of. Oh. Kooky guy. Kooky guy. Um, kooky guy, to say the least. The dare court, I say. I remember the court found him to be kooky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the judge stood up and was like, we determine you are quirked up. <laughs> if, the, if, if there were a quirked up white boy, it would be <laughs> serial killer Ted Bundy. <laughs> but Wait. did he have a bad frame? <laughs> Have a freaking bad frame. <laughs> you sound like juror number seven <laughs> trying to decide whether or not he's guilty. <laughs> Being like, did he have a bed frame? <laughs> guilty oh of a, he may have killed, but at least he was committed to a bed frame <laughs> <laughs> made out of human skin, probably. I don't know. That's a different guy. Well, Gavin, tell me about this little love story tonight. Yeah, oh, wait. I want to re- re- recant it. We went tonight. I, is that the right word? No, recant, recant. means take it back. No, I want you to recount this <laughs> I story. take it back. I'm I actually, it back. I'm getting your girlfriend on the line to recant is... this shit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's going to come on the pod. No, please recount the tale. Before I do, did I ever okay. tell you Sylvia's bitter that we took down her episode on the podcast because... It, it also included your ex, who's definitely not listening, by the way. Yeah, no. Wait, no, why? We, so back in like 2020, we did an episode with uh, <laughs> uh, our girlfriends and uh, someone who I was with. Who's a lovely person. Very, very sweet. But uh, we, it just didn't work out. And I took down the episode. She, Sylvie, has gone on record multiple times being like, you know what? I ate her up. I I was so much she's like I was so much better than her on the pod. It's very <laughs> fun to be like the girlfriends in a situation and get competitive. Mm. Right? Have you done this recently? I have not. Cuz here's the thing. I have never I am rarely in a social situation in which I am the girlfriend. Mm. I would say uh whoever I'm with is going to be the boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Good. He's okay. the extra or yeah. girlfriend whatever. Well, when girlfriend. he's on the leash exactly it makes sense <laughs> yeah when he's got the little collar walking him around pride all cute <laughs> <laughs> you know what i can see it <laughs> I, I can see it we'll get him on some time we are just there, to... oh, there needs to be kink at pride that's exactly what I, that's what I kept kink, on but hearing. only one kink at pride and it's just your boyfriend <laughs> yeah. on a leash <laughs> he's like i don't even like this <laughs> <laughs> but he is on all fours <laughs> yeah. but i do need this he's like <laughs> i need i don't like this i do need it <laughs> <laughs> he's barking he's yapping <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to Niagara Falls. We were long distance for well, that's a, we weren't. Officially, I knew you guys were long distance for a while. I didn't know that. We yeah. weren't officially together when we started, you know, do-do-do. and then she moved to Toronto. What was that? What did scat you guys start singing? doing? <laughs> when, when we started, started when we started scats, <laughs> <laughs> when we started our barbershop quartet. <laughs> Originally, there were two other people, and they dropped out. So, became, do you think barbershop quartets are mostly poly representation? <laughs> <laughs> You can't be in a barbershop. <laughs> you can't be in a barbershop quartet and not have the craziest gay thoughts. <laughs> Every barbershop quartet is a set of four gay thoughts. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you mean T H O T? Of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thought is so funny to me because it's like that hoe over. There! <laughs> get her! Get her! <laughs> She's right there! Go get her. It involves cardinal directions. Exactly. <laughs> that <laughs> over north. <laughs> Thon. <laughs> I wonder. Thou, that thought over that hoe over west. Thou. Westward. Thou. That's how they named Thor from, from Marvel. Oh yeah, that hoe <laughs> over. Round right bend. my ass! <laughs> round the bend! <laughs> Yeah, it was sort of an old timey. Okay, can you up. talk about your thought, babe? Oh yeah, yeah my thought. About your thought. So we were she's so shop- lovely. I feel so bad calling her. A thought. Oh, I'm so sorry. She and I went cheese shopping over Christmas. What did you get? And uh, I got a wonderful Wensleydale, and that's real. Wow, the fuck is a Wensleydale? Thank you for asking. I wasn't gonna say it. It's, I was gonna it's a slightly sweeter cheese, very popular in Wallace and Gromit, and it had cranberries in it. Oh, oh, that sounds Cheers very nice. To that. That's so it sweet. It was delicious. It was so nice. 
Yeah. I'm surprised she didn't make fun of you for choosing a cheese with that name, but it does sound like a cheese she would oh, like. Oh, I have an idea for a segue. Oh, yes. Speaking of cheesy, Gabby, tell me about your love story. Oh, my God. I'm the host so, now. You're, you're the host so now. good. You're, you're so, so good. You usurped. You know, when we were coming up the stairs, I was like, Meredith, just talk as much as you want. <laughs> now I regret it. <laughs> as most people do. As mm. most people do. <laughs> so we, we were, she was in Toronto and I was in New York and then... One day we were FaceTiming drunk and we were like, hey, Niagara Falls is kind of close. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when she said she was in Toronto, I was in New York, I wanted to chime in and go, can I make it any I mean, more obvious? obvious. <laughs> you sorry, know, no, well, continue. Avril Lavigne is Canadian. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Do we just hate Canadians on this podcast? I don't know, but I just don't like that she is. You know what's so crazy? What? <laughs> I was so ready to go balls to the wall when we were joking about Holocaust and 9-11, but then Lucas said something about it about Canadians, and I was like, well, I don't want to go too far. Yeah, I really <laughs> tensed up. I don't want to be crazy. <laughs> I don't want to lose my base. <laughs> I want to. I want to make it clear. I have nothing against Canadians. I know Canadians. Some of my fine, some of my best friends are Canadian. But Avril Lavigne being Canadian, not a fan. Well, the fact that she's not, not even Avril Lavigne. Because why also... is she punk? What is she? Re what do you have to rebel against? against? Your health care? <laughs> yeah, not good enough health care. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah, there, there wasn't enough maple syrup. Maybe. Speaking of syrup, so we're <laughs> we're FaceTiming. <laughs> crying our syrupy tears to each other <laughs> and oh, then uh, she the way she describes it she's like niagara falls was equidistant from the two of us and the way i describe it was niagara falls <laughs> was eight hours away from me and two hours away from her <laughs> <laughs> so, so i took the train an oh. eight hour train ride and i met her at niagara falls and we went under the falls together and then we adopted two stuffed animals and then we went to a Hilton in Buffalo, and I asked her to be my girlfriend. Oh! And then we, um, and then we had sex. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, the next day, we got brunch, and we nearly got kicked out of a toy store uh, because not for having sex, because there was Aww. a little stuffed animal that was only a head. <laughs> What? And it was making me laugh so hard that the attendant had to politely was tell it me. SpongeBob? <laughs> was it SpongeBob? It was like a really furry, small oval head. Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, kind of, but not even that nicely shaped. Was getting Humpty kicked Dumpty's out hot? of a toy store for laughing. What's well, like getting kicked out of a restaurant for eating? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Getting kicked out of a pool for shitting? Where do they draw the line? <laughs> Getting kicked out of a toilet for swimming? I mean, <laughs> where are they gonna draw the freaking line? Dude, you're so down bad for your girlfriend. It's pathetic. <laughs> Getting kicked out of the funeral home for eating the tombstones? Like for eating, the, eating the, tombstones? the tombstones? I thought you were gonna say the corpses. Of course, the we all thought that. We everyone thought that. Yeah, we all want a gravelly tummy. That's what we like. <laughs> eating the tombstones. Eating the tombstones. That would be quite That's an That's my endeavor. thing. That's my kink. Uh, the gravelly, is, gravelly stomach. I love the weight. I love <laughs> weighs me down. Uh, <laughs> the weight of like a, a someone's like uh, life that you have now taken into your stomach. Yeah. Someone's memory that is yeah. heavy. That is that sits that sits. That's with heavy you. stuff. Yeah, it is. We go deep on this pot. We, we, do. we do. We go we real do. deep. You did. I said came up here. I was like, remind me of like the conceit of this pod, and you're like, oh, you was, we'll just ask you like a bunch of invasive questions, <laughs> and I was like, I'm ready. Mm. So, what are your theories? My theories on anything, yeah. uh, in general. I'm not. Do you have any crazy? I'm not theories. a scientist. Wait, I'm a wait woman. before. Wait before. Before we get into other theories, Glossing what do you think it. our dating histories are? Oh, oh yeah, yes. you gotta guess. Well, now yeah. I know a little bit more about you. Yeah, yeah. Um. What would you guess about me, though? I guess to me, Lucas. Well, I feel like if I Wikipedia the page for simp, um, you would pop up. <laughs> That's so true. Okay. No, I don't. I didn't. I didn't mean it that real. And then I'm like. Oh no! I could see you being a like a, a loving simp. I'll tell I'll tell you uh, what someone else has said. Um, April Clark was on. Oh cool! And uh, she had assumed that I was gay. <laughs> we were joking the entire podcast, just riffing, and then she was like, "Lucas, I genuinely didn't know you weren't gay." <laughs> I that is how well that's what Fernando gets that my boyfriend gets that all the time that people assume he's gay at first and. I did, and that's why I felt safe around him. And then I do think that... So and now you feel very unsafe around yeah. him. And now I, no, no, no. I very much so like that he is femme, and then I get to secure my bisexuality by having a boyfriend who weighs less than me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's queer. Now you can no, get a yes. queer haircut. Exactly. Remember that article that came out? The girl who's like, my boyfriend gave me a queer haircut. It was just about 
a girl mm-hmm. whose boyfriend cut her hair short. She got like ratioed because it was so oh. it was it, it was an uh, innocuous article, but it was just very silly. I, I I know exactly the level of like yeah silly but innocuous that you mean where it's like yeah. it doesn't it's it's not bad faith but it's just not reading the room and it's not speaking to like a uni- I don't know did I understand you see, did that. you see the um did you see the video on TikTok that someone made saying that Tom Holland and Zendaya are a queer couple I didn't see the original I saw the backlash yeah I, I saw it said no it's like the way they present themselves is so against the a heteronormative norm and so oh. it makes them a, a queer it's couple not and everyone was like the fuck are you talking about it's not i do want to get back to analyzing the way the vibes you give off though i mm. would say i do understand the instinct to assume you're gay because most people i know that have a theatery cadence mm. the assumption is that they're i have a, i have several stand-up friends where i yeah. assumed they were gay just because of how they truly the rhythm with which they speak and the way that they know how to project and the fact okay. that they wear shirts that vaguely fit them. And if metrosexual was still a term, that's what I would use. But otherwise, now I'm just like, no, it's one or the other. And, then, right. and you know the neediness. The and the neediness, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, like, um, the thirst. The desperation. The thirst. Yeah. I, to me, you fall under the camp of a lot of guys that I know where I'm like, uh, gay vibes. But no, what is what our gay vibes are actually just like nice boyfriend vibes. To me, I'm like you. Okay. I would could see you as a serial monogamous big time. I don't see you as a fuck boy, but I don't know if any of this is true. And okay. I am ready to recant any of it. Are any of us using that right? That's what, recant's what you do to yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. Just recant, <laughs> recount, recoil. Holocaust. Fuck it. What does it matter? <laughs> what is, it's all the same. What, what, are, what are these words? What are we what doing? Are these what do these words mean? What are we doing? I, um, I don't know. Even the way you just now like addressed your ex and you weren't like awkward. You were just like, nice person. Didn't work out. It was very like, I'm like. Oh, I bet he's just like a nice boyfriend and has had several girlfriends. That's my guess. Oh, that's, that's You're very actually sweet. right on the money. That's Is it true? Pretty, it's pretty. It's pretty close. Have yeah. you had a few longest term relationships? I have had a, like a. I I haven't had. When I was in high school, I was in a relationship for over a year. I have not had been in a relationship over a year since then, though. Oh, but I have okay. been in relationships. How? Yeah. What's the longest since then? Uh, the longest since then, uh, maybe eight months. Okay. Yeah. Have you, have people, I'm assuming, like, propositioned you because of your virality, like, online DMs? People slipping into your DMs. I just say sliding DMs. I said propositioned you based on your (laughs) virality. What the fuck? Sorry. People just Oh, shit. I should have warned you. White claws make me really smart. (laughs) (laughs) Bombs away. Get ready to talk about... (laughs) Throw. I I got I got a I got a Throwing little bit neck. of. A... I'll talk about I'll talk about throw. I'll talk about throw and back. Throw. Yeah. Throw. yeah. <laughs> <Get ready. laughs> no more talk of two vaginas. Just drink up. You'll solve time travel. Yeah, Just like I, I'll tell. Do you know what was crazy? I once got Venmoed fifteen dollars by a woman who said, "I'm in love with you. I don't know how else to start contact. Will you please talk to me?" To her love is 15 smackaroos. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> That's all I got from that. And then I, I messaged a friend who, uh, she was also like pretty big online. And I was like, what do I do with this? And immediately she responded saying, send the money back and block this person. I was like, that sounds right. I wouldn't and block, so, but I would oh, send the money back. I, yeah. You did. Well, what did they, were they uh, a baddie? <laughs> yeah. Were they hot? <laughs> eh. Okay. That, that would probably change the answer. <laughs> well, to me, I think of, um, do you guys I once know- got a dating resume at my P.O. box. A resume so, through, sna- through regular mail. Someone sent a letter with like multiple attached multiple a bunch pictures. of like white powder in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anthrax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My love will kill you. That's and so it was like written. It, like the resume was like cut up from scraps of newspaper mm, yeah. <laughs> and magazines. What? <laughs> I don't think his wires attached to it. <laughs> said, like, like, little clock. There's a recording device and a camera <laughs> just said, apply me into bedroom. Just like apply me into, apply bed- me into, into bedroom. bedroom. Yeah, the bedroom wall. <laughs> My, uh, that's my hinge profile. <laughs> <laughs> I added in my friend's, uh, my friend's hinge profile today to say. Oh, you did? Oh my god, what did I? Say? You know that prompt that's like it's t- it'll be time to delete hinge when? Yeah. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> he he had one that was fairly typical, and I changed it to when my back hurts. <laughs> Because it makes no sense. That's and funny. That's From, what I was like wiped on. Your back, but 
your back b- got blown out? Or yeah. is it like my back is uh, aching from uh, supporting the emotional needs <laughs> of my partner so well? Well, here's or the origin like that. of I'll that. I'll delete this up when I'm in a bad relationship. <laughs> 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 when my back hurts <laughs> because, <laughs> because you're a needy fuck. Can I curse on here? Yeah. It's late. We in have the game spoken for about everything <laughs> on here. I think you're like, can I say fuck? Can I say fuck? Can I say fuck? Yeah. Can uh, I say fuck? Can I, can I say what I really think about the Holocaust? <laughs> <laughs> Love that I set that up for you. I really I, do. I, I hate it because I can't. No, I you can't take it back. I just wait. you hate the Holocaust. Wow. <laughs> wow. Sorry, That's your brain. Sorry if it's just me. I thought the Holocaust was pretty bad. <laughs> You're taking a stand. That's really brave. Thank I you. Really appreciate Where did that. you find the courage to say such brave things? Uh, half of a white claw. <laughs> is actually what gave me oh i get really smart and i get really brave you get so brave i find my spine <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's why your back hurts because yeah. you found your spine so exactly. that's why you deleted your hinge mm. that is it's why not because you have a no, boyfriend no yeah. i got wiped up and i said I, one of the first things i said was that i said i'm not deleting hinge <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep up. tending these matches these are my crops exactly <laughs> the one dating app uh sylvie and i are both desperately trying to get on is raya, raya. <laughs> Did you guys ever try? Can I tell you? Lucas I, is on the wait list. <laughs> I'm on the wait list. Nice. <laughs> you you did on the wait go list to forever. college. Ever? Yeah, some That's college. so funny. Some I college. would think you would make no, it. No. Yeah. I I applied and uh, yeah. I got. How much are you dating right now? I'm I'm out there. I'm, okay. I'm I'm out there. I I think I'm going on a date with someone on Tuesday. Actually, yeah. Here's my thing. I think you would be really really good at first dates. I don't know about you in a relationship and stuff, but oh, I'm like, I could so see that. For yeah, him. you would just make someone I think I feel am pretty good. I mean, on this first is like dates. a first I think date. I am. This is like a. I first mean, we've date. met before, but we, but no, we've but not. Co- we've cavorted. This is not yeah. a first date, dude. This is the setup. This is an interview, and I am I'm nailing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're interviewing. Uh, you're get- Wait, what do you think my dating history is? Other than other than my my the slow uh, burn, but then you also hinted at I don't know how much you've talked about on the pod a not great relationship beforehand. I have and I did it. Didn't you say that was long? It was very long. So then from your early 20s 15 so then- years no okay. <laughs> i'm just a lot older than i look exactly well, you- <laughs> yeah you're responsible for the holocaust yeah that's <laughs> like, that was you. yeah it was ugh. it was hitler we, we all make date. mistakes i do think that the <laughs> holocaust a was a frame, mistake so i i um <laughs> Cannot believe how much I we brought that back. I do think that you're. I don't know what because I think I asked you like if you were out in high school, correct? Yes. And then, I don't know. I like didn't date at all in high school, so I don't like to think about other people who got to. No, I um. Fair enough. You, you would have, have started dating all? your other long term relationship when in college, then. Yes. So then I would guess maybe you had a brief, not exactly slutty, but like experimental few years of teens into college of just like hooking up with a few people some one-offs and then i would say you fell into a long-term relationship stayed in that for a long time teensy teensy tiny bit of overlap when you started talking to your current <laughs> girlfriend just a little, just a little <laughs> and then you went to niagara falls got kicked out of a toy store and now you almost, are almost almost kicked, kicked out of like a, a ken store. burns documentary <laughs> <laughs> we're zooming in on pictures of like yeah. instagram right now um no it's pi- it's pictures from the great depression but it has <laughs> nothing to do with the subject matter <laughs> i love that <laughs> it's kit from american girl <laughs> are you uh, i don't know the american girl i was gonna be like are you a kit and then i would not have been able to keep the conversation going tell me if i'm correct about you your... that's pretty that's pretty on the money i i had yeah. one serious relationship in high school but i also oh, you did yeah, but it wasn't so serious that I didn't also have little flirtations here and there. I mean, and it's then, high school. oh yeah, what was I? Seven, exactly. You know? Seven crushing a push. <laughs> <laughs> crushing a puss. Uh, oh, boo. In a push. <laughs> in, in a, a push. push. No sit, one even uh, sit in the back of the class. I didn't even know what history was because I didn't have any. You were just too deep in that box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. This is crass. I say no more cursing. <laughs> this I, is really crass. This is a My mother question. This. When did box become a synonym for uh, vulva? 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 Is box just the outside? <laughs> box is the lips. Box is just the lips. Oh. When did, when did box... I would argue if we're talking about boxes, we could say flaps. Ew. But we could. But I don't want to. But yeah, no. I, I was going to say larva, but that's not right. Larva. 
That's larva <laughs> is different, and maybe applies oh, no. to you. And if that's your truth, I what think. What does your vagina do? Well, Release you know, it's larva? in the back of me, like oh, I yeah. said, and I don't have a butt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you do. You do have a two-hander. <laughs> <laughs> Right before Gabby has sex, she's like, two hands. Two hands. <laughs> like, I got a reminder on the 10 and 2. <laughs> 10 and 2. <laughs> 10 and 2. <laughs> and neither of us know what to drive, so it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow it's still driving stick. <laughs> exactly. Now, my, uh, my vagina is four-wheel drive. <laughs> exactly. I'm kidding. I don't have one of those. Uh, you, you don't got have that a Subaru bag. You exactly. don't have a Subaru? I do not have a Subaru. That Now, now we're in back to, you, like, uh, like understandable euphemism territory. Mm. Like I feel like you're like, oh, you drive in a Subaru. That feels like clear yeah, that feels code. like code. that's yeah, obvious. Oh, a yeah. little outdated, but pretty obvious. Can I guess your dating history? Sure. I don't know if you'll get it right because I think it's not how I present. But go on. I don't think I'll get it right, but let me try. I you just said you didn't date in high school. Yeah, I believe that. But then in college, you started a harem. <laughs> You started a harem. You started a, a Mormon uh, polygamist offshoot. Okay, yeah. so you guys read my blog before yeah, I read you read one. Yeah. It's one of those things, you know how psychics are like, I know everything about you, but they actually just Google you. Mm. Oh, so that's what is that did. what they do? Often, yes. Ruining the illusion. Yeah. Like, think about the... Ever heard of Wikipedia? <laughs> think about the celebrity <laughs> medium. He just Googles everybody. <laughs> it's the stupid... He gets the dumbest celebrities, and then he Googles them, and then he just tells them their life story, and they're yeah. like, wow, I can't believe you know that. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, then how did Cesar Milan figure me out? Is that the dog whisperer? Yeah. What's his name? <laughs> That's the dog whisperer. I only well, know why about did Jackson they send Galaxy? me to him? That was rude. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Was that a dig? <laughs> Getting when my family sent me to the dog whisperer. <laughs> and I think, hey, here's my follow up. Why did he do such a good job with me? <laughs> Why What's what happened right? after the harem? Why am I crushing like, it now in life? Why am I crushing it now? <laughs> you were like kind of sick of the harem. You're like, ugh, leadership role is hard. So you went yeah. to your family, say you to the love dog whisperer. Leadership. Whisper. Wrong. I've never turned down a leadership oh, fuck. position. Okay, mm. sorry. Class president every year since eighth grade. You're looking at really? Uh, genuinely, I used to be Whoa. very type A. I see that for you. I I, I could see that as Thank well. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, unfortunate. <laughs> it is. It's weird, but I was I was like a little class president, valedictorian type shit. And then I said, what if I tried stand up comedy? <laughs> would you Would you be able to even believe that the two of us are also former type A's? I would very much so. <laughs> would you? Well, you'd there's be so wrong. much gear uh, around here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I just It'd I just don't think shit. it's how either uh, we, I don't think either of us present neurotic. I don't think either of us present uh uh I could see Lucas being ourselves. more neurotic. Oh, I have a lot of neurotic. But I, I see you you shit. you seem to partner with enough neurotic people that I know that you mm. must have had a history. I definitely, I, I definitely need someone who's not more neurotic than me. I need someone who ha who has a calm energy. That's what I. Oh, okay. That so that's the thing. If you are the calm energy to multiple neurotic people, yeah. can we just say it out loud? This is talking smack about Aaron Avalon Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> baby, you know we are. I love. I love. Why isn't he here? Come on, There's Aaron. Two what if we texted him? We were and like, he's here. To no. I would. I would love to check under your seats. Yeah. <laughs> Using an Aaron joke. Aaron Everyone <laughs> gets an Aaron, an Aaron Avalon Clemens. You get an Aaron Avalon I Clemens. I wish there would be no greater gift. Yeah. I would love that. He's just all cut up under all of those. <laughs> that <laughs> would not be the ideal execution, but... You know, he listens to every episode, so he's going to really? hear about himself being... Aaron, I love you very much. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to hear about himself being uh, cut open. Oh, I, will, I will say... I will. This is one prediction I will make about your dating, or just your past in general, and your development. And I, maybe I'm wrong, but you said that you like didn't do much in high school, and that you were very like focused on your academics and valid and so on so i think that while you were in college you had an explosive period where you mm -hmm. tried a lot of substances and you tried a lot of people and then you were like okay i've tried everything i now know what i need in life love it but incorrect oh okay Ooh. sorely incorrect i would say so i went to all girls school but it was um like in virginia and we like I told like I had was have like I wouldn't I didn't do like pills in high school but like we drank a bunch which okay. was so I kind of got that out of my system and then freshman year of college fell into a group that was drinking a bunch but I did not have the like pent up I was so type A like that I needed to go balls to the wall I didn't I would say that I like was the first to like be like 
yeah, I get the frat thing. I'm good. I don't need any more of that. We were in like Boston. Mm. I, I didn't need it. So I actually stayed pretty type A all through college. I, was it Harvard? It was not Harvard. It was across the pond from Harvard. <laughs> I, went, I, I was in Boston, but I... Um, always the bridesmaid. <laughs> always the bridesmaid. Me. Oh, I'd Your love college. Always, always the, the bridesmaid. Always the Ben Affleck, never exactly. the Matt D. Demon. 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 <laughs> what were you about to say? Matt Demon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what gay people call him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Matt Demon. Doesn't isn't he the one who said the F? Oh yeah, he, oh, was yeah, like, he said I only just stopped saying it because my daughter was like, "Hey, that's not cool." You I think that's so crazy and something he could have left to himself. But I, I mean, at least the moral of the story is that he's like, "I stopped." You could say what you want, want to about that him. Out of me, say what though. you want about him. He was honest in that moment. You knew that he was saying the truth. No, of course. Where yeah. he was, and he was saying the truth, and it was, I think, to him maybe a humble bra- a brag of being like, I I quit. I don't do that anymore. Mm. And I'm yeah, like, it's yeah, like his yeah. nicotine addiction. He's yeah, so strong. Yeah. I think he'll relapse though. I do, and I pro- I think he probably has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to in the comments section of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, 100% straight? I don't think so. <laughs> I've got another name for you. Dude, that'd be so cool if Matt Damon called you I, a slur. I love the idea that Matt Damon is just an edgelord, just like, boy. <laughs> How many is. celebrities do you think of burner accounts like that? How many celebrities? I, who, Purely I don't know. Purely for leaving comments, though. Purely I, for calling Lucas slurs. Yeah. <laughs> well, how many celebrities have you impersonated in a way that they would want to retaliate anonymously? I I was very intentional to never try to make someone look bad. And I actually had well, someone when like John Mulaney, it came out that he had been dating Olivia Munn and that he was like about to have what? a kid. What? Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I was following that closely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just watched a special where he was still married. Oh, yeah. That's so I'm way behind. Throwback. <laughs> uh, I actually just saw him last Saturday. It was outstanding. Was it? Oh, my the God. The show was I outstanding. That. He's so good. He had, I don't want to spoil any of his, well, I'll tell you guys okay. after, but it was, oh, anyway. But when, like, his, like, recent news came out, someone who I will not name uh, reached out to me asking for me to collab and doing, like, a sketch where I do an impression. And it was to, like, make him look bad, like a dirtbag. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? We don't know any details about his relationship. He's in a very fragile spot. This would no help no one. I, I was. I it, agree with that stance. I think it's yeah. very um, revealing of what people get out of comedy mm, sometimes and like yeah. what the point is. Because I do think mm. that, I mean, it's, I would not argue that it's like possible to punch down at a celebrity of that stature, but at the same time, it's like, what are you, like, what is cathartic about that for you to like want an impression exactly. of someone during that time? I don't yeah. know. I, I think it's- Do you do any impressions? I'm really, really bad at impressions, accents, all that kind of stuff. What is your best one though? Yeah, do I have one that is like my roommate's story of, uh, she was slept with an Irish man, Ooh. and then in the morning she rolled over and said, "What time is it?" And so now this is forever our entry point to do the accent. She said, "What time is it?" And he goes, uh, "It's seven <laughs> thirty." That's 7:30. all I have. Seven thirty. That's Where the only is Irish. your HBO hour? I, exactly. <laughs> Where? This is my, why am I not cast on Dairy Freaking Girls? <laughs> Where hey, Lauren Michaels, it? you get a load of this? No, <laughs> I can't. I can't do a single impression. And okay. I even know, like, of my clothes. Seven dirty. <laughs> Seven dirty. <laughs> Seven dirty. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, um, there was a Scottish guy who went up at a mic recently that I saw, and uh, he was probably very funny and he was very nice. But I, it was the first time I saw someone. I was like, I need subtitles under you because oh. that's so. That was the first oh, time you bless. saw someone who needed subtitles. Well, you can only say that about a white person, right? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna say that about <laughs> someone who has like a different accent. Fair. Like, you try and understand but a scottish accent wow. i don't know <laughs> i was thinking more like just pe- like drunk people who are incoherent and i'm like i would love subtitles i've only seen one really drunk person go up on stage what yeah dude how many times have you seen me I'm just kidding <laughs> oh, no, I, right. I did have a phenomenally drunk show the other day really like, yeah. and the kind of show where i was like because it was pride so i had been drinking at mm. w- started drinking at one and i started oh, you drinking did a show fast. that day yes and oh, then at yeah. eight did i see you that day no you saw me the day after or the day yes, after that yes i saw you the day after that and i was burnt out but i did have a show that night and i 
uh, saw a picture of me holding a waffle on stage. Don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I some people told it's the kind of show where I did a set that was comfortable enough that I clearly went on autopilot and felt good. Mm. Yeah. I got I got like and now I sound like I'm bragging, but I did get like no you can brag. praise for it where because I think if when people perform drunk you can teeter on the edge of like they're having fun so we're all having fun but if it gets sad for a second if yes. you get too drunk for one second i do not think it's possible to get people back because once mm. you've revealed to the audience that you're sad they're gonna have that in their head no matter how much fun you look like you're having mm. so yeah, i think i think you're right i think it's a risky thing of like you have to you have to drive it home you can't because once you yeah. lose them you're gone because you won't be you won't have the wits about you, you have to, to drunk drive back. You, you have, have to, drunk to drunk drive. drive. To drunk drive. You have to it's drunk drive. It's the one drive. time you can. Yeah. Do you know I grew up thinking that uh, beer for the road was a normal thing? Really? What? I was. Someone reminded me of that recently. I didn't realize like drunk driving was such a thing. <laughs> 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 my dad was like, uh, would drive me and my friends around and be like, okay, I just need a beer for the road. And I was like, of course. I didn't realize driving was such a thing. Where'd you grow up? New York. <laughs> yeah. Bitch. Yeah. And Sorry. I grew up here too. So like, Bitch. yeah. Well, you know what's fun? So I do this bit about how me and my girlfriend both can't drive. But here's the thing. I grew up in New York where it's natural not to drive. She grew up in Miami where <laughs> fully everybody <laughs> fucking drives. No excuse, drives. bitch. No excuse. No excuse. I think she's just... We good. listen to John Mulaney just walk in to call your girlfriend a bitch. That was the kind of John Mulaney is. <laughs> was it? <laughs> Say it again. No, no, excuse, I, I, no excuse, bitch. You I were would, you were getting. Your I was on it, honestly, no honestly. No excuse. I was genuinely, genuinely was that doing. Your Mulaney? Cause that's that you, Because that's so good. Wait, do it, do it. <laughs> no excuse. <laughs> it's totally it's teetering mom. between that and like Livia Soprano. <laughs> I wish the Lord would take <laughs> me now. <laughs> a genuine. Okay, what I was trying to do was sort of like a register that David Dobbins does, because he. And no oh. excuse. It's sort of. Yes, it was, that's yes. what I was trying He's to so do. Lock her up. If I was. <laughs> <laughs> He's always like lock her up, <laughs> lock her up. Oh, that's so, wait. Do your Mulaney no excuse, okay. bitch. No excuse, bitch. No excuse. Oh, that oh, is that's much better. Good. Yeah, that's that is different. Better. I thought <laughs> I thought he snuck in the apartment, but John Mulaney's no. here. He's Should here. we tell people that? Yeah, John he's our Mulaney producer. Is, John. He is. He fell in our times, man. John, can yeah. he come in? he's hiding. He's really yeah. shy. John Mulaney is so shy. He's so quirky. Yeah. Can I tell? I'm going to put you on blast for a moment. On blast. Something that you said and did that really bothered me. Oh, tell really me. bothered me. <laughs> oh God. Oh yeah. No, I, I'm 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 going to get into it. I genuinely don't know what's coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As you don't. Get ready, bitch. Um, <laughs> okay. So what happened was, so I saw you in an improv show. Uh, I think I'm it was, not good at improv. Can everyone? Can we say that? This is what I'm mad at you about. Is that you said? Okay, you said that you had like a day of drinking, and then you moved with uh, with your wonderful roommate yes. uh, Julia Zen, and that afterwards you like were you hadn't slept that much, and then you did a wonderful improv show oh, that you were nice. hilarious, and then you were like, yeah, I'm really not that good at improv, and I was like. Oh, eat shit. Fuck you. That's I was... so kind of you to say, but I and don't no, think it's accurate. Can I tell you one more thing is that I said the same thing to Sam Schaefer and he was like, yeah, she does this all the fucking time. And I was like, fuck Meredith, I dude. love how yeah. adversarial we are right now about being kind. Yeah. No, yeah. it is funny. The best compliment a comic can get is when like you do a joke and someone's like, I hate you. Because yeah. it's like, why yeah. didn't I get to that first? But unfortunately, I, that has never that's happened. That's very nice. I don't do, like I said with the, like accents and stuff, I really struggle with characters and I think my... Like, I I like ironic detachment and stuff with stand up, so it's really really hard for me to do. And I don't have any like theater acting. I don't know like how I don't know improv as well. So maybe I feel unmoored, and that's why I feel like I'm doing maybe much worse than I actually am. You truly are one of the most gifted uh, off the cuff people I've ever seen. That's, and that's so real. nice. I can't agree with it, but I'm learning how to accept compliments, so I'm saying thank you. Yeah. But that's really nice. You'll accept any compliment. I thought you. <laughs> what are you gonna where are you Any gonna compliment? go we got some compliments in the tank don't you dare do keep them in there you Drown have nice them. bones nice bones mm -hmm. thank Yo, you yeah hey, really hey, Meredith. hey 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 what's up girl great skin what's great up? great skin i appreciate it he's a freckles guy i can tell <laughs> <laughs> but he's not saying great skin like great skin care he's saying like great skin can i have it yeah can i wear it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. great skin i need a new lampshade <laughs> 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 you got Ted Bunny on the raid. We have like I do want to you guys to preface this episode with a sort of bingo sheet of like controversial topics that we just like lightly touched on. Yeah. Oh, the description will contain it, I think. Excuse me. <laughs> Lucas. I that's what the white claw does to you. It attacks yeah. you from the it betrays you. It attacks claw. you from the inside. It attacks yeah. you from the inside. It creates little claws. What makes in something your stomach? a surge? 
Uh, I think it's just like I think it has like slightly more alcohol. I think that's what it is. Oh, excellent! That's why I feel so on top. I of think it. like a typical white claw is five percent, and this is eight percent. Did you guys know this has zero protein? What the fuck? What the fuck? Well, I'm in. This is bulking well, season for me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta get ripped. I gotta but if ripped. I just start, it took out a hard boiled egg yeah. and like. <laughs> Swallow it like an Advil. No, yeah, wait, you, you put it in the white, or you put it into a blender, and then you blend it up. You're like, this is what. I oh, oh, <laughs> See, oh it like... sickening! What a good idea that I'm never gonna try. <laughs> I would love that. All your food groups done. I. <laughs> your food. That's such a good Meredith impression. <laughs> Yes. All your food groups. All your food groups. That's how you sound. Alcohol yeah. and eggs. Yeah. Can I ask you? I want to yes. know. I want to know what it was like at boarding school. Oh, yeah, what oh, was right. it like boarding school? I only school. just learned that you went. Uh, so from what year to what year? What age? Uh, nine to ninth grade to senior year. So that was the most natural way to say so, that. So, just, so high school. Just high school. High, school, school. Just high school. standard. Yeah. Standard high school. How Tiny. far away was it from home? I lived in rural Pennsylvania, and then it was a very, very similar area in rural virginia about a three hour drive gotcha. it sounds kind of fun it what? was yeah. very fun in a way i think i talk about it like uh i'm a little withholding about it now because i think you know i don't know I, I you get your like privilege bubble sure. you, re you realize what like boarding school like evokes that kind of stuff but um no it was my whole personality my everything for a long time and mm. i was like you know being um it was so cult-like in sometimes great ways but th there was so many traditions and stuff that you like don't have time to focus on anything else like i didn't even care that i wasn't like mm. dating and like other there were a lot of day students and people who were like had boyfriends and stuff and i was like nah i'm trying to be what was called fox captain because we had like different fox captain fox captain okay no fox no i um there oh, no how do i describe fox how do i describe this in short it was like okay. like hogwarts houses there were two houses sure. foxes and hounds this tradition no. was called fox hound you uh there's competitions throughout the year you're like friend foxes and hounds are friends throughout the year and then fox hound week three different weeks throughout the year uh you are fighting to the death but what happens are there certain leadership Fight, positions? Wait, sorry, what, what, fighting to the death? What? But uh, uh, in terms of uh, girl friendships, um, <laughs> it's like it's it's field hockey, basketball, a uh, really white school for basketball to be the big one. Sure. And this one that doesn't matter as much at the end. Everyone checks out in the spring. It is horseback riding which oh, i did baby. not do but a lot you of weren't a horse girl i was a horse girl adjacent and so <laughs> they some of my dude some of my you closest friends girl. some of my closest friends are horse girls uh but <laughs> i <laughs> they that was totally funding the school there was like a barn at this school that like uh -huh. was uh ooh, the, just some of the richest people you will ever know were sure. coming to the school and riding horses it was really really crazy that that was my normal and then i grew up and was like where the fuck did i come from but um the foxhound tradition was this thing where like you yeah it was you were foxes versus hounds and stuff but then what it really was in terms of like social hierarchy it wasn't like classic school structure of like this sounds like i'm the my concept of high schools comes from the 80s movies but it wasn't like cheerleaders and nerds and jocks it was like foxhound was the uh, dynamic for all kinds of like your social standing but it was like these leadership positions where you the foxes had like a captain and then these things called oh i'll go through it but like you would manager cheerleader painter assistant manager assistant cheerleader assistant painter so these eight girls that were like the whole school voted on what you would get and they all had different roles and responsibilities everything is made up this ecosystem is just feeding itself closely well of course forever. it's made up it yeah. would be crazy if this was just the <laughs> this biological was ordained food by chain. god this, like, it was so crazy there's they were no like, oldest way. tradition <laughs> it was voted on oldest. by everyone in the school there were secret societies like secret societies I've like some people were pouring wax oh, like, yeah, on our with, founder's like, the bones grave because the bones wax on the founder's grave. I carved the wax off. The hounds were pouring wax on our founder's grave. Rebellious. Dude, whoa. And, like, and then in the middle of the night, you go and carve it off. And then it. I ate it. And then I ate it. No, you take, you hold the wax. Whoa, this is actually like a secret. Like I actually, this is the cult like of it is so ingrained in me that I'm like, 
one of my the high school friends is a fan and is going to be like you can't be saying this that's how i know it was a cult because i'm like i have this like instinct of like i'm doing a bad thing right now by talking about this on a oh microphone my God. are you okay <laughs> no no it was great i was popular so i was fine okay <laughs> pop off yeah it was i think my school also rewarded in terms of popularity as opposed to where i think i would have been very mid in a regular high school the all girls dynamic cult like dynamic i think rewarded being a little bit of an underdog being mm. like nice and sure. well liked and smart but not attractive enough to be a threat yeah. so i kind of like by being very attainable it helped me rise to the top is my understanding a quirky okay. girl vibes a quirky guys girl yeah. vibes, but not guys girl because i think guys girls got punished for being like pick me's in the like the all girls yeah, school dynamic, yeah. where it was like guy if guys liked you you well you're not gonna be popular here but since i was just like kind of like witty and nice to everybody it uh serves me well wow i it feel sounds like very the world weird. though does like a little bit of an underdog quality helping you rise to the top yes mm. It sounds like you have an innate understanding of the world around you because of foxes that's what, and hounds. That's what's called being 75% through a white claw. <laughs> you get an innate understanding of the world you get, around yeah. you. You get smart, you get brave, and oh, now shit. you get wise. They put that on the label. What? <laughs> get an innate understanding of the world around you. <laughs> yeah. White claws, that's what the surge is. Yeah. Crafted using our unique... Meredith, don't censor process. yourself. Right on... Right, don't censor yourself. You don't have the protein to hold back. <laughs> Did the boarding school have good food? I would say I ate a lot of it. I It was really funny to be like a 15-year-old and be like everyone talking about the freshman 15. And uh, I look back yeah. and I'm like, no, we were just kids going through puberty. Yeah. But yeah. except for the freshman 15 was real. I did like go from, you know, scrawny middle schooler to like, oh, my God, I have boobs and nothing fits me like oh, real man. quick that fresh that fresh preach fall. on soul sister yeah exactly <laughs> Hell, lucas yeah. got boobs oh yeah and then he he, he took them away yeah he took them away <laughs> they them passed away. on I, <laughs> I gave him a thrift shop <laughs> they, he, they, they passed yeah. uh, to the thrift shop passed, yeah. yeah oh i think i, I that's those are the ones i have now they're wow. sitting in a beacon's closet yeah some I of them are in i Meredith's. lost them in 9 11. If, if i get cat called and someone says nice tits i go they're thrifted <laughs> <laughs> You guys were fucking <laughs> pinching each other over your 9-11 joke. <laughs> I just yeah. rolled through it. We have moments where we just like need to put a hand on someone's I know. Under it's so sweet. It's the native New Yorker with them. Yeah. I love I like having those moments though. Like having co-hosts is yes. like Very that nice. relationship is not a given in this world. And I think we take it for advantage all the take it for granted all the time of like hosting mics, hosting shows, podcasts, yeah. all that stuff of being like Having a friend who is more than a friend, but having loving them at the co-host level, having so many platonic business partnerships in our lives is so fun and joyful. God, mm. 80% through, I'm getting sad. <laughs> yeah. No, I know oh, what you well, mean. Well, we can ask you more personal shit. If, sure. If, if, if we want, what do you, what, do you have anything on your mind? Um, While you're thinking, of, I, I will say like, I'm sorry, I'm just interrupting you a lot. I'm I was sorry. just going to say, what's the worst thing you've ever done? But oh, while you think about question. that, I don't know if I have that off the top of my head. Well, Probably no, the I've, beginning of this podcast. It must have been really bad. Yeah, the beginning of this <laughs> well, podcast is the worst thing I was going to say, the reason why I um, why I asked Gabby if she wanted to do a podcast is that we were just talking, because like we knew each other like a little bit before the pandemic, but then we like didn't see each other for a while. And then we mm -hmm. saw each other very casually at a Wobbly Ladder show hosted by Lee and Maxim. Love them. And then afterwards, we were talking. We were like just DMing. Like, we were just DMing. And you mentioned that you were curious about maybe starting a podcast. And I was... And in that moment, I thought, this is someone I think is not only really funny, but also really reliable and someone I just want to get to know better. Totally. And just everything aligned where I thought, no, I feel very confident in asking. the same way about oh, you. Yeah. It's so sweet. Wow. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm gonna throw up. I'm blood. gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come. Say I'm gonna come in the like saddest, like, oh my god, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna come. come. <laughs> um, that's how I Stop always say it, so crying. Cute. What is the worst thing you've ever done? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely wasn't. <laughs> what if she was like starting this podcast? With yeah, you? I was starting this podcast. Oh, starting this uh, my starting my open mic. So worst with thing Aaron Abelot Clemens. <laughs> that's why I murdered him and put him under our seats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst thing I've ever done. I don't know if this actually is the worst. I'm sure if, if someone knows the worst thing I've done, please write it into the uh, comments. But <laughs> yeah. I have something on my mind I can say. The worst, oh, that's funny. I did, in college I had a boyfriend 
I'm so sorry. Disgusting. I know. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> I'm going to put this mic in my mouth. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say he was actually a nice guy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that. He was Brave. a very nice guy. He was wow. funny. He was sweet. Single? Was, uh, single? He was single. He is was he not s- single at the time. Is I was he single now? Oh, no. I think he has a girlfriend, which I'm very relieved about. <sighs> Whatever. I'm very happy about it because it means he moved on from this terrible thing I did. <laughs> um, he and I were at the end of our relationship and we were not getting along. And we uh, went to see Now You See Me Too. And I'm afterwards, there. he... Daniel Radcliffe was in that. Oh, no. Yeah, he is. Yeah. What? I don't remember because I was falling asleep during the movie. But you can't have a movie about magicians and just put in a fucking wizard. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What the fuck? <laughs> disgusting it was a flop (laughs) it was a flop (laughs) the the movie now you see well i don't remember a lot about it so it must have been a flop it's because daniel radcliffe erased my memory of it i I think it's also because you uh clearly were going through a hard time with a nice guy i was going through a hard time i was falling asleep in the fear i was tired that day and then i when you're caught between a hard time and a rock and a rock please time time So I was, I was, I was rock, rock place. Oh, rock place. <laughs> rock place. Hi, I'm Dwayne Johnson. Welcome to my rock place. <laughs> is that the episode title or is it some college? I, uh, Don't well, do some college because that's fully my boyfriend's bit that I've been oh, cutting. Okay, okay, okay. Boo. Oh, no, he's different. I did put a different spin on it. His is that he legitimately went to some college. So he act, he went to like some community college. So oh, he okay. does do a bit about what it's like to the story that is implied. Mine of saying the whole like Charlotte's Web some <laughs> college some yeah. is my take on his bit. I see. Okay, pretty good. Please continue though. So this guy. So between a rock place and a hard fall, that's where <laughs> we were. And then we're walking out the theater, and I'm tired. I'm trying to go home, and he asks me with a very vulnerable voice if I want to walk around a bit first. And I don't know what came over me, but I like yelled at him. I was like, "Didn't you see me in the theater? I was falling asleep. I don't want to walk around." And we like got in an argument about our relationship because oh. obviously it was bigger than whether I was falling asleep in the theater. Right. It was about the fact that we were not compatible. <laughs> and so we we go home, we hug, we say goodnight, and I know in my heart of hearts, I'm like, "We are gonna break up tomorrow." The next day, I'm going to break up with him. And he calls me and he says, my grandma just died. <gasps> and I went, I'm so sorry. He was like, I love you so much. Never leave me. I was like, I love you too. And I hang up the phone. And I'm like, fuck. Because I have to leave him. Because it wasn't working out. Yes. And then. Because you can't date someone without a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> know what that means i'm sorry (laughs) you gotta keep up appearances (laughs) oh you know because i was gonna go to the ball that night people were gonna ask me (laughs) does your boyfriend have a grandma Grandma. or doesn't he Always have asking to that. lie. <laughs> be like, sure, he has a grandma. It's like that importance of being earnest quote. Like to yeah. lose one parent is a tragedy. To lose both is irresponsible. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Come on, you don't want a guy. And to lose a grandparent, <laughs> no one will date. You. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's the end of the line. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> you were talking about your bad breakup. My bad breakup. Oh my God. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna stick it out. I won't leave him. I'm gonna stick it out. It's gonna be fine. Even though I knew I wanted to date women, and I didn't want to date him. And then I was at my internship and he picked me up from work and he had, and I am not kidding, the worst haircut I had ever seen on a human being. And uh, wait, be describe it, be graphic. Okay. Um, remember Hey Arnold? I could never forget. You could never That's forget. That's my nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so he 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 had like the it was like the sides had more hair and the middle like didn't have a lot of hair. Uh, oh, oh that's what color was his hair? Uh, brown. Oh wait, okay. did he look like the bald guy that lives in that house? The sort of like Danny DeVito looking guy <laughs> in Hey Arnold, you know? I don't, I don't remember this character. He looked like an like a like a uh, vertical no like a horizontal oval. He oh. looked like a. Oh no! So Hey Arnold, okay. I he got you. Like real, fo- but Hey Arnold had that cute thing—the little like hair on the sides of his head this guy looked like a full football with oh, no Jesus. tv show with no <laughs> tv show so, with well, no uh, with no, no HBO development special. Deal. <laughs> and if you have no tv show then you have no bitches son. yeah <laughs> pff, no bitches not gonna be famous mm-hmm. and so we're walking around and one day i'm like so where'd you where'd you where'd you get that haircut and he said oh my mom gave it to me 
Um, and I said, okay, um, maybe next time <laughs> you should go to a barber. And he was like, no, it's not convenient for me. And I said, it is convenient for you. You live in Manhattan and your mom lives in Queens. So you go all the way to Queens every time you want to get your hair cut by your mom. There's a barber right across the street from where you live and it would be $5 to get your hair cut. And he admitted to me that he would hurt his mom's feelings too much mm. if he let somebody else cut his hair. That's real. And I said that I thought we needed some space. And he was like, do you mean space or do you mean we want to break up? And eventually we broke up, um, even though it very much upset him because it was <laughs> pretty much the day after his grandmother's funeral. And I, I thought was, you were about to say it was so close to the haircut. It was so close to the <laughs> haircut. <laughs> It was well, the haircut that broke me. The I would say rule me. of threes in his life. Grandma <laughs> passes, Bad shitty haircut. haircut, and girlfriend dumps you. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the worst thing I've ever done. You guys, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, that's not oh that God. bad. I don't think that's that bad. I think that, I think if I you were- I killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, it was Ted Bundy. It was yeah. Ted Bundy, Okay, yeah. no, I will tell you the, wor one, uh, the worst thing I've ever done. Which I actually made a TikTok video about it um, ages ago, back in 2020. So it can't be that bad. It's not that bad. It's pretty funny. But was it when you caused COVID? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I remember. That, that was you. I transformed <laughs> yeah. into a bat. Enough said. <laughs> no said. No, this is this is what I did. So when I was eight years old, I was at this sort of like outdoor fair in the countryside in upstate New York, and I found this magician who was doing card tricks for like a semicircle of kids. Do I, have I told you this? Maybe, but Maybe. keep going. Okay. So he was doing like had a, like a semicircle of kids around him. He's doing card tricks, entertaining them. And so I joined the circle and then he started doing some tricks. For and I was like, oh, this guy's really good. And then he started doing one with me. It was like a classic, like, is this your card? Wait, how old are you? I was eight. OK, I was eight years old. And something flipped in my head where I realized I could just say this wasn't my card regardless of oh, what he says that's yeah. not the, i just told oh no it gets so much worse okay. okay oh no uh -huh. this gets so much worse this gets this gets really manipulative but so <laughs> no i'm not lying it gets bad so he does a card trick with me and, and he's like and is this your card and i was like no like i was really disappointed and he was like what oh my god and so he started doing it again no i think it was i think he did a different card trick but a similar sort of like is this your card and then i was like Dude, this isn't my card. I, like, I oh, tried and to, you're hamming it up. Yeah, I was like making it seem like I was embarrassed for him. But then all the other kids around me, they clocked into what I was doing. And they were like, oh, we know what he's doing. And so they started like ruining any trick he did. And it got to the point where he was so crushed, so broken that he was just sitting on the grass. And I was standing next to him and he was like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> <laughs> dude you're a bastard <laughs> okay oh. i think that was their faults no 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 no, 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 no. In. let me see no oh, I they mean... were just following orders yeah <laughs> <laughs> it always comes back here doesn't it it always comes back can, no wait can i tell you the worst thing oh, yeah. like, so he was opening up to me he was like i just i don't know what i'm doing man with my life and i i literally said Matt, you're still young. You could probably turn this around. <laughs> As an eight-year-old? Yeah. Did you get that line from a TV show? That's crazy. Yeah, there's no way. There's oh my god, you destroyed this man. Yeah, I don't know where he is now. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. That and that boy was <laughs> Joseph R. Biden. <laughs> Feel old yet? Feel old Joseph yet? O. R. Can I say something? You guys know Joseph Biden's. You know him, right? <laughs> I've heard, I'm familiar <laughs> with him. his work. You know his middle name, Joseph. But. Um, oh wait! Oh, Reginald. Uh, no, no. <laughs> this is great. The listeners at home are pounding on their keyboards. <laughs> oh, I forgot it, but I know what. I, yeah, what is it? Round the bend. It <laughs> is okay. I will tell you what it actually is. Is Robinette? Rob. Oh that's yeah. It, but Robinette. I get off at the <laughs> thought of him. And no, <laughs> I get off at the. Uh, I like that photo of him just biting his wife's finger. <laughs> oh, that's a great photo. Uh, He's like, well, you're famously a sick freak, but I yeah, get off at the famously. Amtrak station named after him, Don't Joseph R. Biden. And for years, I've had this private little joke with myself where I know his middle name, but I'll just get off and I'll see it. It says, welcome to Joseph R. Biden, like Amtrak station. And I go, I say out loud and I go, Joseph Railroad Biden. <laughs> 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 just like, Do you guys adorable. have those little things where you have little... Inside jokes with yourself. Yeah. Like oh, my yeah. theory that Barry Weiss's full name is 
baritone <laughs> but yeah exactly baritone whites. baritone whites yeah that's so it, and you're just like that's for me <laughs> that's why she's mad because her name is baritone whites baritone she whites. is mad all can, the time can i tell you something i do yes if i see like if i see a, a pregnant woman walk past i'll be like she's really let herself go <laughs> <laughs> yes that's yes! perfect <laughs> i love it's just i for me. love that i do i've been doing a thing recently where i'll like you know pretend to touch someone's arm and like squeeze someone's arm and i'll be like oh my god have you been letting yourself go <laughs> that's awesome. i love little things like that here's that's a awesome. here's a bad one yeah. sylvie and i do this thing where it happened on the road trip where i said i have to pee and she said me too and then she sighed and went me pee <laughs> <laughs> And uh, now every time either of us have to pee, we say me pee, even though obviously uh, the correct pun is pee too. Oh my God. <laughs> that is the correct pun. <laughs> We're like, <sighs> for pee. every turn of phrase, <laughs> there's a correct and incorrect pun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pee too. Is That's beautiful. Me too. pee is so. Me pee. Me pee. Me, pee. <laughs> <laughs> me that is so close to being pee too. Oh my God. I. That's hilarious. And the way she, she was so somber. She was like, <sighs> me pee. Me it's pee. so oh my god that's hilarious it's also a lot funnier because sylvie doesn't do comedy correct no she. Doesn't. i think when people commit to little somber things like goofy somber that's things great. like that it's so much better when they're not a comic because you know the way their gears turning isn't like as performance based they're not as like yes. this it's is genuine. gonna be funny yeah, they're yeah, literally yeah. just like <sighs> me pee and i'm like that's <laughs> so much better that's awesome <laughs> she'll tell me about the stand-up set she will never do she's like this would Whoa. be in my stand-up set oh, if i did stand up this I love is interesting that. and the jokes are like they're like so cute <laughs> oh, i love it Wait, can, you, can you give us a little uh, a little example a little sample <laughs> She's you like, know when you're having period sex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she does like a John And reverse. your partner's like, me too. <laughs> you Maybe. know when you're fucking real. That's how she talks, yeah. She has one that's like, my girlfriend takes good pictures of me now because bullying works. And then she gives me a little smile that's like, oh, oh that's so cute. Because bullying works. I feel like that is a classic. Yeah. I like, like that. That's not a joke Do yet. you take good pictures of her now? Oh, is there I a grain do. of truth? I do. There is such a grain of truth. I've been every, t every behind every thirst trap is a simp who loves her very much. Oh, that could be. That's a podcast episode name. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a gravestone quote. Behind every simp, wait, <laughs> wait, is a thirst trap who loves them very much. <laughs> oh, what's the worst thing you've ever done? Yes, I didn't. Ha I I deliberately turned the conversation away, not because I'm hiding something big, but because I said I don't think I have something reward. I can't. Think so you haven't done it yet. I think it's coming. I think it's coming as soon yeah. as we hit, you hit stop record. Mm. I do, I can think of like a lot of like little embarrassing things. So I'm trying to think of something, a time where I like wronged someone to that extent that you guys are monsters. But I also, I wish I hadn't gone last because now I'm like, I know I'm a shitty person. I just, I'm going blank right now. Mm. What is, give me like an age range or something and I'll try to think. Let's say 10 and below. Okay, a little kid shitty thing that I did. Yeah. God damn it. I can think of a time like I definitely like the time you took the Lord's name in vain. The time <laughs> I took the Lord's name in vain. Um what's something fucking shitty that I've Well, done? I remember when you were 5 and you plagiarized You were there. Um what's his name set? Yeah, I was there. Um, I did plagiarize something once. Louis CK. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I love, I played Dries' set, and, no, never mind, I'm not going down to Louis C.K. track. <laughs> I love his later work. I uh, do, I can think of a time I did, I played Dries big in, oh, you're, okay, because I was very academic and such, and then, um, <laughs> this this one I just, I don't remember if I just played Dries the title or the whole plot, but we, I guess it was some kind of creative writing exercise. Do you guys remember the Disney Channel movie, The Color of Friendship? Do I ever? I do not. I was not a Disney Channel Lucas, kid. clearly you're not white South African like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, of course. I, you know, just absolutely titled a paper, The Color of Friendship, and wrote a story about, it was probably for MLK Day, which is, is it insane for a white person to plagiarize for an MLK Day assignment? Um, I remember I did plagiarize that and I remember it so well because I know that I was doing it. I was second grade, so I was conscious of what I was doing, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and I <laughs> um, fully got like a great title. Boy, like in red pen, like getting confidence on that. So that's a little bit of plagiarism. Okay, okay, okay. I can't okay. think of other like really shitty things that I've done, but I know they're out there. Yeah. What's something bad? 
whatever. I am. Um, I told you I killed a guy. Like yeah, yeah you did. I remember that. What was, like, it, what was it? What was the story? Who was the guy? Who was the? I killed a guy. I don't know. Do you guys know my dad? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Not yeah. since that Just fateful kidding. day. He's yeah. he's fully around. Helped me move the other day. So shout out Dave Dietz. I love shout you guys. Dave I don't Dietz. think he's gonna listen to this. Good I job, understand. Jay. My mom doesn't listen anymore. Well, you know who's done terrible things? Oh our yes, listeners. our listeners. Oh. I, I was smelling a segue brewing. You smelled that segue. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So listeners sometimes write in with little stories. Sometimes they ask for advice. Sometimes it's just for comments. Okay. So. And my role is to respond. Your role is to yes. respond. Wh just whatever your gut reaction is. Excellent. Yes. Okay. I have, um, I have one pulled up. So. I just had a very random out of the blue thought, so I thought you may want to hear it. No one likes Mike Pence. <laughs> the Democrats don't like him because he's a Republican and works with Trump ish. The Republicans don't like him because he went against Trump. He stands entirely alone because the one creature that did like him, the fly on his head, is most definitely dead by now. I feel a little bad for him. <laughs> oh, the fly's totally dead. Yeah. yeah. The fly's totally dead. I don't know. I guess that's just, I think like the silver lining is like sometimes. Um, even hot people have it hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, that, that's interesting. I, I meant the fly. The fly. Oh, that's a... The candle that burns twice as bright lives half as long. Uh -huh. <laughs> half as long. I slurred my speech You slurred so my club to, for a joke in which you're, like, attracted to bugs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it worth it? <laughs> what are you, a freaking caterpillar? Wait, I love this. You have a listener base that puts... I, I mean... He is. Uh, this guy's ever get hungry, Cap. Yeah, yeah I wasn't joking. I, I, just, I love a cocoon. I like that you have a listener base that is like, I have a thought that could be a tweet, but I think it would be better as a comment under a <laughs> yeah, podcast. Your podcast. I like that too. Not That's, all it's thoughts sweet. have to be tweets. I like that person. Do you shout, out, like the, do you shout out the user's name? Uh, it's, uh, it's all no. anonymous just so that they'll send us like real things. You know? Oh, smart, smart, smart. Here's one real thing. And actually, Lucas, I'm interested in this. Yes. Question primarily for Lucas or if you have an AMAB guest. What does a boner feel like? I'm trans uh -huh. F to M and I spent an hour last night crying because I don't and probably will never know mm. what it feels like. If it's possible, please describe using the most using mostly neutral anatomical references or female if possible sorry okay, i know this okay. is weird but google does a shitty job i cannot imagine google does a good job with that fantastic question amazing i mean i would say what? i as someone who's not trans i have cried thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> like i would love i want to out of curiosity can, well can i ask did you you seem like you had something you wanted to say is there anything you wanted to say on the matter oh no i just uh, appreciated the question okay. i think it's a very uh, uh, whenever there is something unknowable like that, that curiosity uh, eats away at me forever. Yes. It sucks. Like I actually feel a little bit like, uh, like my stomach's clenched right now because I'm like I want to know so badly. Oh yes. No, and I and I don't think in like a dysphoric way, just in like a, I fucking want to know. Yeah. So I will I will tell you when you like first start getting erection because they're so random. They're yes. so random, especially like. If you were, I guess the first question: Have you ever had one? <laughs> it's a good one question. Day, one, day <laughs> one day, I will reach the mountaintop. <laughs> no, but like, especially when when you're just like in school and you're just wearing jeans and they're just they're pressing up again. It's just it's so painful. And Wait, it's, Gabby, is this doing it for you? <laughs> I'm really. Do you want me on. to say it again slower? <laughs> I'm really turned on. No. Oh, it's so painful when you're. I can do middle. my audio but narrator actually, voice. For me, you sensual is as fast as possible. This? I am. I am right now a middle schooler. Yes. Yes. I am. I am currently. <laughs> What's your favorite subject to get a boner in? I do. Uh... <laughs> Jim. Wait. I'll tell you the worst one. Oh, I'll tell you the worst yeah. one, which was well, because like I was a I was a theater kid in high school, and so I took dance all four years. But oh, sure. I... Your high school had dance. Yeah. My high school had dance too. What? I got a B. I was really bad How at dance. How do you not get an A in dance? Um, being really bad at it. Bad By attitude. being us. <laughs> By being us. Okay. All the dance talent going yeah. to my sister. Uh, that uh, goddamn your sister. Yeah. But anyways, I back to the describing yes. the boners. Well, I would wear I would wear like gym shorts because they're like very easy to move in, but they're also not constrict. So if you got a boner at that point, it would just show. I definitely really saw some. Yeah. You did. And I never so, noticed. Literally, well, look, I mean, look oh, at yeah. me, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing right now. Lucas is hard as a rock. Hey. Podcasting hey. is his thing. Rock place or a hard time. <laughs> when I when I was in like class and I would get in a like literally what I would do is I would just start 
looking around the room and just quietly naming everything. I'll be like light, window, brick, uh, uh, floorboard. I would just start naming everything right? to distract myself as much as possible. It's like you're having a panic attack. It was, yeah. it was a lot. It was not fun. So, but... I'm now okay. as an adult, yeah, trying to describe it in the anatomical. I really want to answer this person's question. Yeah, I think I, it's not that you get them less often. It's just easier to deal with somehow. You can just sort of like, I don't know. What, but what does it feel it, like? Is it no, like yeah, a, what, what is, is it, it oh, in yeah. a good and positive? Okay, okay, okay. Is um, it a cloudy day? You definitely, f <laughs> there is a moment of like euphoria. There is a, there is a euphoria that comes with it. You feel like. I want to do something. It's just like you, have you, a purpose. you just you feel motivated. You mm -hmm. do feel because like blood is rushing through you. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so you definitely do you like obviously like, well, well I was going to say like you want to not every time you want to because sometimes you just get an erection, but you're not actually that horny mm. you're, or it, it's just it just happens. So is it like it's better to get an erection while you're like working because it's like you'll work better? No, it's very distracting. Have oh, you ever okay. been in love? I don't have a joke answer, but yes, I have been in love. Yes. So is a boner feel different when you're in love? <laughs> <laughs> this is such a serious question. Stop laughing at me. I mean this so much. No, um, <laughs> I will say that when you're in what love. Is it? Gabby, come okay? on. Yeah, wait, what's, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> what I'm thinking is like. Lucas can be in love, but like the boner can't be in love. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. That is true. The no, boner cannot what be in love. I'm genuinely thinking no. the boner has it the same whether it's like in your math class or like during no. sex with your loved one. Right? Disagree. Oh, oh but, the boner can betray you. I understand. And it has <laughs> many a time. I guess I love that we are the ones arguing about boners, and yet well, because I'm thinking about the parallel of like it feels different to be turned on for someone you're in love with of versus course. turned on yeah. for. I will say it change. I will say boners definitely change your relationship with your own thoughts because tell me if you can relate. But do you guys are you just able to think whatever you want and have whatever fantasies in your mind without worrying about it being expressed in your body involuntarily? Because that's what a boner is like. You can't let your mind wander all the time. Mm, that is that's interesting. I, and I've definitely seen I remember now I'm getting flashbacks like jokes about people being like, oh, in class, girls, can, their fantasies can be anything. But like you. If it's, you have a, that's exactly what I'm you have to about. be focused. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah. is interesting. That oh, that's a boner betraying you. But I'm the, so if we're getting to answering this person's question in good yes. faith of like trying to give them, what's the closest? Because like uh, my mind goes to like, oh, people say a sneeze is an eighth of an orgasm. Like what? What other physical experience could you use to get close to what a boner feels like? It's so. You should be a journalist. This yeah. is awesome. This like, is actually, really. Um. <laughs> it's. Um. Damn, this is really t uh, a like, really like good Google YouTube spiral. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> just the idea of being in a rabbit it's hole. It's just like subscribing really to our podcast. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's what it. No, but just that's what a good boner feels like. Yeah, <laughs> but like just when you're just an obsession that isn't mental but is physical, and you need to deal with it. Mm. It's. It's I like that everything any, is very mental, the way you're describing it, in very terms of like being motivated, having well, a tunnel vision yeah. for yes. just That's exactly it. Yeah. You're explaining my thoughts really well. Well, but, I am bricked up. Yeah, yeah you're the fucked pillow's up right like now. floating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm, tr I'm trying to think like also, so like, especially like, I think a lot of, well, I, I may be like just speaking, but I think for a lot of guys, like your relationship to like your own orga, it's not always something you just have to and that you get to enjoy it's something you almost just have to get rid of sometimes because it just builds up and you're just like i need to be able to focus on shit mm -hmm. and I, or i i have this or just whatever like sometimes you just need it out of you literally i've actually heard that and i've heard like about friends who are in relationships it's like poison building up in you and yeah. you just need to evacuate it from your body i've heard about friends who are in relationships with men and they're like Sometimes, like, I get upset when they, like, jerk off in the shower or whatever instead of having sex with me. But for them, it's just, like, a release so they can get on with their day. It's Ex not, like, that a is sex exactly thing. It. Yes. Yeah. That is exactly and, it. And the release, I think that's also, it's, like, inherently more, like, violent to, like, remove a feeling from your yeah. body. Because I think I've heard, I've read something of a trans person describing coming at with a penis versus coming, like, with a vagina. Because I think, honestly, it would be easier to describe having a boner than it is to describe, like, the 
quote unquote female orgasm because like the <laughs> waves doesn't thing exist. doesn't which first doesn't of all exist. who's heard of it but yeah. no the whole like people like, say like it's like waves which is like mm. uh, it's not like waves I, that's never been adequate description in my no. opinion but I think that the idea of a more singular experience of like I like the like to me like a sneeze is like a close thing of being like oh I feel so good when it's done, done yes which I think is uh an interesting physical experience yeah. that doesn't have a lot of parallels I don't know. I know what you mean. It's so, almost like it's it's almost not actually that sexual. It's just a bodily need that you just need taken care of. Every Is now a and boner again. painful? It can be. Okay. It mm. can be in some situations. Mm. If you're like, if it's all also, if you have, if you have not come in a while, then a boner is even harder and it mm. gets even more likely to be painful. When you are like hooking up with someone and you know that sex is going to happen and the yeah. boner comes, does that boner feel good? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and not yeah. just like yeah, a surprise one in like AP yeah. bio. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's all, well, it's also that you get to release your yeah, boner your... from its entrapments. Entrapments. <laughs> Aww. So it's okay. The boner is, you know, pride and prejudice. I have okay. not seen or read it. Okay. The boner's like, um, what's her name? The main girl in it. Kira Knightley. Elizabeth. Kira Knightley. Yeah, Elizabeth. And the orgasm is when she finally gets to be with Darcy. Yeah. I feel like you could have used a lot of couples. <laughs> yeah, no. <nope. laughs> <laughs> nope, there's only one. Couldn't be Rose and Jack. <laughs> no. Yeah. Couldn't be Ross and Monica. Jack's dead. <laughs> the Darcy's are alive. <laughs> I hope someone knows I said Ross and Monica. Yeah. <laughs> Ross and Monica. <laughs> oh. Ew. You're controversial. Dude, rewatch that show. It's so all there. So you're from rural Pennsylvania? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all those friends did date each other, didn't they? Yeah. I think so. But anyways, um, thanks for talking so much about your boner. I'll, yeah. I'll, hey, I'll talk about it more. No, I, I, I am so interested. Another thing I have, I'm adding on to questions. Does the um, post-coital like, dislodging feel good or hurt because there's always a verbal response and i'm like good bad can you guys keep talking about this while i pee i'm not yes. gonna take yes, off my can. whole jumpsuit i'm just gonna move it to the side <laughs> nah dude you don't need to take it off <laughs> <Yeah>. um <laughs> the dislodging um it's well i will say it's different condom and no condom how so um with a condom, it can sometimes be a little bit awkward because it may shift in how attached it is to your skin. Yep. Because like if you're because if you're like very hard, then it then it's gonna be like very taut. But if you're even just a little bit looser, then you may feel friction between against skin and uh, latex. I guess. Yeah. A joke my boyfriend does have right now that I like a lot is he keeps saying condoms are too big. Like he says he goes <laughs> he says he goes into CVS and asks for that slim fit, <laughs> which I think is so stupid. But totally accurate. No, I, uh, <laughs> I think I have. I, I will I have say, so like, questions. like extra large. It's it's a you can no. make a balloon out of them. It's totally. Someone, another comic it's I love. So vanity. It's such a vanity. Has thing. a joke about like how um, Ali O'Neill has a joke about how you can like a regular condom. You can like put that out the. You driving down the hot highway. You put that out the car window and it yes. <laughs> be like a body bag. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it's like that is true. No, the different that is sizes exactly. are just marketing. Yeah. Wait, can I? Well, can that I, was absolutely. The, you were lightning fast. And you also <sighs> didn't say before you went me pee. So yeah, <laughs> me pee, me, me did pee. pee. Go piss me. Go yeah. piss me. <laughs> what did I? What did I miss? We were talking about condom fits. Yeah. We were condom talking about fits. condom fits and yeah, dislodging. Slim fits. Uh, fits? Like no, oh, just like how, how condoms. They fit yeah. you. Yeah. I see. Can it. I wait? Can I actually share? Not condom Please. outfits. I want to share actually one of my most treasured memories. Which the segue <laughs> is unbelievable. I yeah. love the segue. I, I am I am I'm serious. So there was one time I was I was with this girl. We were in a relationship and we were taking a bath together. Oh, it was like a romantic bath, uh, like a romantic bubble bath. And we were just having a really funny conversation about penises. She was just asking me like lots of questions mm -hmm. about penises, very much like this. And I was just like lying to and my I swear to God, my penis was just like a sea mine just like <laughs> just like it this was is one of his most treasured memories <laughs> no, no 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 no. I'm, I'm let me finish it let me finish it let me oh talking about your boner and you're saying yeah, let yeah, me yeah. finish and then the magician yeah. came in then the magician came in and said i want my money um no but it was i was it had buoyancy and and she was asking and i was like i'm gonna teach you something else about penises right now and she was like what and i was like 
I, I was literally like, close your eyes and just put your hand out in the water. Oh. And then she was like, all right. And then she did. And then she found it. And she was like, whoa. And I was like, I know that's weird, right? She was like, it is. And we started laughing about it. And mm -hmm. I genuinely, I was, because like we had had like dinner earlier that day. We like, we like made dinner together. Aww. We had like had sex early. And then we were just enjoying each other's company. We had a, a company. We had a beautiful, goofy conversation. And I remember saying to myself, Savor this moment. This is the happiest you've ever been. Oh, I do love it. Was that. A, it was a very meaningful moment for me. And it's interesting it was to be was, yeah. self-aware in it. Because I think the way you describe it is very, very nice. Of like, rem remember it, savor it. I, I have like a, in my head, I sometimes get pre-sad. Because I know I'm going to not be in this moment yeah, later yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like not the right framing i think you're framing of like save it this is the happiest you've been that's so that's beautiful lovely yeah. and you're in a bath and yeah you're in a bath Ugh. it is nice though and it's nice to be at that level of comfort with someone where they can just be like asking you a bunch of questions being with them is turning you on and you guys can but it's not like the like unspoken how do i get rid of this boner it's like no yeah. i can just have this boner with this person yes in the bath it was yeah. just, I just oh. felt so open and just, I like, I didn't have to think, it was effortless. It was just, it was a, and I, I remember thinking like, if I ever, if this ever doesn't work, which it didn't. And, but I remember thinking you need to like reach this or higher. Like this is the benchmark. Totally. For like a, for actually a good relationship. Like mm. you need, you at least need this. I know exactly. That I level of mean. like openness and humor and just, it was, yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Should That's, we do one more? Uh, oh yeah, submission. submission? Sure, yeah, let's, let's do it. Actually, so we should probably skip it so we can get to Anne Hathaway and go. Oh to our shit, final. we should actually because it's past chatting. five p.m. Yeah, okay. it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to Anne with you. Okay. All right, so we have our 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 final segment, which oh. is called Self Perception Corner, where we ask our guest uh, to describe how they feel they are perceived by other people, and then we say how we actually perceive you. It's very mysterious, very juicy segment. Have you guys both been subject to it and answered yes. it yourselves? Okay. Yes, we it. have. The very darn first it. time we did. Not yes. a while. So you guys know though. people hate Not your guts. Not a while. Though. Yeah. Okay. A hundred percent. People yeah. people hear that, and I don't know if they just didn't listen to the podcast. I mean, I know you were like, "What's this all about?" But like, people are like, "Wait, what kind of sick fucking question is this?" This is very. This is very hard for me. I feel like I lack the vocabulary and self-esteem to do it justice i it, i think it's a really good fun question and you guys are nice people so i know it's not a gotcha where i'm gonna be like i think i'm pretty funny and you're gonna be like wrong um <laughs> but i think i don't know i've changed i'm not to sound like, like a teen but i do feel like someone who like reinvents themselves maybe more than average um i think i am perceived <sighs> I'm a ginger. Uh, no, I, I uh, really, really don't know how to answer this question. I guess I think I am. You gave me a nice compliment earlier about being pretty uh, quick on the draw in conversations. I think I'm pretty good in um, like group settings, trying to like make everyone feel involved and stuff. I think if uh, there, I have an issue, it's more being annoying than it is being boring, which I've made that kind of conscious decision before of being like, I could shut up or I could be like the loud, annoying one with like whatever talking too much. And I think I've leaned into that more in recent years. I think I am. I see myself. I'm very introverted and like to be independent and alone all the time. But I know that that's not how I present. I I don't know. I don't know if I'm like come across as like type A, type B. I feel like I'm pretty nice. I try to be friends with everyone. I do not consider myself a hater. I think in comedy, I'm always blown away by like how much I just genuinely like so many people. And like I was saying with a co-host earlier about like having these certain relationships with so many people like our own age, but also from like different ages and different backgrounds. Like it's not a given in life. And you talk to people who are, I know this profession gets like shout on all the time, but like accountants and it's like, they know the people they work with. That's mm -hmm. fine. But we have like a second life every night where we're, I'm like, my heart is full of love for so many freaking people. So I consider myself not a hater, down to clown, bricked up, down bad, washed up, burnt out. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> what a fucking elegant you answer. You got great adjectives, dude. That was awesome. I think yeah. you do have the vocabulary and oh, the self awareness yeah. to answer that. You got the sauce. You got the um, sauce. But I'm big lost. Time. <laughs> but I'm but you're lost, lost in the, the sauce. sauce. Am I the first person to say that? 
Yeah, you, you invented that. Oh, and no, you, there was one other person before you. Marco Polo. Because <laughs> he invented spaghetti, and then he was like, oh, I'm lost in all this sauce. Yeah. That's what Wait, happened. Marco? Marco, yeah. You Marco? Know from Polo. <laughs> That's all I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, you guys don't have to answer the second part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, We'll skip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel fine. No, I will, I will say I. you're going to hate me right now for something I'm about to say. You're really going to hate it. I, I think you're a fucking prodigy. That's the truth. I genuinely <laughs> think I think you are one of the most you have was probably like the most raw talent I've seen of any comedian I know. Maybe not the but like I, I'm just, you are when I think of someone who's just like astounds me with someone that they're the stuff that they're able to come up with on the fly, let alone let alone stuff that they like write beforehand or and like perfect over time. It's just it is astounding to watch you on stage, which I've been able to do a few times. And you're just like the easiest person to talk to. I'm envious of shit of you. I go bomb at the mic now. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're gonna go <laughs> up That's and be so... like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch you sit and be like, yeah. the whole time." <laughs> Boom! Which oh, I have no. never done in my entire life watching you. Every time you go up, I laugh. That's um, so sweet. Something we've been joking about recently is like host of a mic is cutting people off and being like, they're like, "I was on a date the other day," or they're telling a story, <laughs> and you just go on mic and you go, "Is this real?" <laughs> <laughs> and being like, "Are you telling the truth?" <laughs> are you making a joke oh, sorry there is one open mic in new york city that aaron told me about that used to happen pre-pandemic where the host would um time give people the light based on how funny he thought they were oh, i yeah. adore that but it's also terrible i'll tell you who i get to do my tight 30 seconds <laughs> yeah <laughs> meredith i think you have many sides to you and i don't know that i've quite figured you out but i love being around you that's my answer. I love being around you too. And I see you both as, we're all prodigies here. Abundance mindset of the fact that we, if like a 0.1% of people in the world are prodigies, we are around all of them. Do you ever it's, think about it's that? It's really Probably incredible. I think likely. about that often, but I think also about, cause like I grew up like in like performing arts education and also now I'm like in grad school and everything. So I think a lot about like, there's often ways of like ranking people, like especially when you have so many peers who like you see all the time, like how good that's this person, how good's this person. And like sometimes like we all get swept up in that, but I've thought about it for myself a little and I've been like, what does it matter? I can never quantify if I am good. And frankly, materially, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter Yep. if I am because there's plenty of people who aren't good and they get booked. Oh, yeah. It oh, is yeah. it is a shame, but it's also a little empowering that work ethic is actually more important. But all you can do, the work ethic is what you can control. Yes, exactly. You can't well, control it talent. depends how you define like work, because there's like work ethic in terms of writing. I think is good. My mm. work ethic in terms of networking, I think you could use work, and mm. I think that applies more. But yeah. this was that's such a lovely segment. Have you ever had someone on the pod that you don't care for and let loose? <laughs> <laughs> I we there was one person who I was like I don't know that I understood who you really were before it was someone who had like transitioned and it was someone I don't think I liked very much Chris sure. before their transit yeah Chris sure <laughs> ate that bitch <laughs> yeah. you know Chris sure plays on my softball team I did not sometimes I see Chris around and I am like that's me I think I've seen pictures of Chris and I'm like that looks a lot like me I think we have the same head shape a, like a lot so yeah, that's all that's what I'm bit, yeah. also hilarious hilarious comic but I also do think I look like she Chris. is made, one of her good friends on the team is this uh, really wild conspiracy theorist anti-vaxxer and you'd think they wouldn't be friends but Chris will go up and be like so my dick was feeling weird the other day <laughs> and the conspiracy theorist guy will be like I gotta hear this. <laughs> it is that's common possibly ground. Possibly the cutest it's thing. It's so I've nice ever that seen. my dad is on this softball team. <laughs> your dad is he plays third base. Yeah. And that's where In you more go, ways he than and one. I go. <laughs> Meredith, you've that's been an amazing smart. guest. You've been spectacular. This um this comes out a week from Monday. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? A week from Socials, Monday? shows, what's going on? Shows, I would love In Meredith uh, Dietz's life. Follow me at Dietz D I E T Z underscore Meredith on Twitter, Dietz.m on Instagram, and come to the Jerry Seinfeld Presents show July 31st. Yeah, uh, baby. Black Cat Lower East Side. Come there to see comedy, or I guess kill me <laughs> <laughs> if you need to do that yeah baby <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's a great way to die definitely i'm gonna be murdering meredith deets very soon so look out for that <laughs> look under your seats look under your it's seats it's the thing to do in this city <laughs> it's the yeah what you and do i'm out new york murder <laughs> <laughs> you're not a true new yorker until you murder meredith deets <laughs> i agree yeah.
Uh, July 11th, I'm going to be on Andre Medrano's show, Would You Rather? And then uh, July oh, nice. something, whenever Max Mallon's birthday is, check your calendar. I'm going to be on Max Mallon's birthday show at Two Virgins Comedy. Hell oh, yeah, you are. Then I got a couple roast battles. I can't remember what they are. Uh, clearly, that speaks to my opponents. <laughs> <laughs> First roast joke written already. Yeah. But... <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> uh, follow me on Instagram. If you have made it this far into the podcast, you probably already follow me on Instagram. <laughs> so. Yeah, you, you don't need our social socials yeah um i do though i need you know it on my social i i will be on laughing your mask off live july 11th at the duplex uh you can find in, uh, uh info on my instagram uh otherwise check me out in edinburgh uh <gasps> next month i didn't August. know that. to scotland whoa yeah. yeah congrats yeah i'm doing the edinburgh festival baby wow. yeah, oh my heart's so warm that oh, rocks yeah. I can't wait. I'm I'm one of the only people that doesn't have to pay for room and board because I'm staying with family. Suck a butt, Whoa. everyone else. Wait, wait, you're doing the what festival? Suck the what? Butt. Sorry. The what festival? The Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Can, can you say that? Oh God, this is a tough. <laughs> this is the Tupperware moment. Can you say that? Edinburgh. Edinburgh? Yeah. Edin. Edinburgh. 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 I'm just saying. I think it might be a slur. <laughs> I'm gonna say he's going up at seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. This is one of the other in jokes we have in our house besides me, Pete. Like one of us will say a perfectly <laughs> fine word, like "oh, let's make pancakes," and I'll be like, "Can you say that?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. Wait, you can't say. That. Don't you can't say that. You can't say yeah. that. <laughs> what are you doing? I we, I do have that where Fernando will say he's Mexican, and I'm like, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, I have a great bit with Sylvia, who's Cuban, and I'll be like, oh, it's so nice to have a native Venezuelan in our house. <laughs> <laughs> We're bad white We're people. Bad. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's a, that's a perfect place to end. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Thank you to Meredith Dietz for being an amazing guest. Thank we'll you, see guys you guys for having me. Bye. Bye.